I'm in a different place. If you are not subscribed to my vlog channel, if you do not follow me on Instagram, then you would not know that I am currently in LA. I'm spending 16 days in LA and I'm over halfway through my trip already and I seriously cannot believe it. But another thing I should address is yes, I did take two weeks off of my main channel. I have been uploading on my vlog channel, so make sure that you're subscribed over there. Also, check out my vlog channel because uh, I uploaded a life update and that has been why I ended up taking a little bit of a break from this channel, but we are back today with a good freaking video. You guys absolutely love editing videos, and I'm so happy to share this with you guys because I've got some like nitty gritty details that I know you guys have been wanting to learn how to do on your own, so I'm going to be sharing everything, how I edit my YouTube videos using Final Cut Pro. Now, I do have two of these videos talking about iMovie because before I jumped to Final Cut Pro in April this year, I used iMovie, so if you are using currently that platform, Platform, I definitely recommend checking out those videos and I will include them in the description bar down below But I did switch over from iMovie to Final Cut Pro and I also created another video on that sharing my thoughts on switching over and some basics, like very beginner, beginner things you need to know when it comes to using Final Cut. So if you are curious, like how I edit on my external hard drive, I shared that in that video. So I don't want to go over it again today. I'm not totally advanced within Final Cut. Let me just be honest with you guys. I'm not, but I've got some valuable information that I think you guys can use and learn from whether you use Final Cut or not. When you wanna come up here, come up. Nancy's gonna join us. Okay, now I'm just gonna have a dog like peeping out of the side of my body. Baby, that looks weird. So I ended up filming this video yesterday and I just started editing it this morning. I would say maybe I've spent 10 minutes on it. I really have not spent long at all. But what I ended up doing is I created an event over here. I also created a project right here under that event. And if you wanna learn how to do that, check out my other video talking about switching from iMovie to Final Cut, some basics you need to know just to get started because I cover that there. I also dropped in all of my files down here. If I zoom out a little bit, I dropped in all of my files that I've got going on and Currently, this video is 41 minutes long and I've got a decent amount that I want to crop out. But what I've been doing so far, you can see I've got some clips right here. I was just cutting out some of my breaks, some of the areas that I made mistakes. And what I like to use, I like to use my toolbar up at the top or I use command B and use the blade tool. You cut it and then you delete it. But I like to use my toolbar at the top so I can just like cut off one side where it's like where I'm starting a new clip type of thing. Again, I covered that in another video, so I don't really want to cover that right now. So I'm just going to go through and this is my first step in the process is the cut down. I need to make sure that I like the video as is. The text of the video, the main A roll of the video, I need to make sure that I like it and see if I need to get any other extra clips. So this video that I'm editing right now is actually going to be the video that is uploaded. It should be uploaded the week after you guys are watching this. So you guys get a little sneak peek into what's coming to my YouTube channel. And this video is very much so heavy in terms of screen recording. So I share exactly what I am doing on my computer. And a question I get asked all the time is how I record my computer screen as well as have the little picture of me in the corner. You guys know how I do that. So what I end up doing is I've got a MacBook Pro right here and there's actually a feature where you can just click the camera and the computer will screen record for you. So I think it's using QuickTime that it gets the screen recording, but I've used QuickTime in the past and I just like whatever software comes on my computer, it works really, really well. But my trick is that when I am doing those screen recordings, guys, I am recording my screen. So I've got that going at the same time and I do have the audio being recorded on my screen as well, but I will also have my camera rolling. And what I'll do is I will not use the audio that comes from my computer. I only use that to match up the audio with the visual to make sure that it makes sense. And then I will remove that audio, which I'm going to show you here in a second. And I will keep the audio from this. And then let me share with you exactly how I do the overlay. So in case you want to do the exact same thing within your YouTube videos. So I've got a folder right here, which has all of my files for this one YouTube video. I already imported all of these MP4s because those are the ones that came from my camera. These ones down here are my screen recording. So I actually did didn't use the first one. I know that I already cut that one out. So I'm going to drag and drop this. Actually, what I want to do, I need to make sure where the text is so that I can match it up perfectly. So I'm just going to listen to this really quick. My channel right now, if you click on videos, it's okay. Okay. Yeah, no. So this is over a little bit. And one thing you can do is you can see if you just look at the audio levels, you can kind of match this up. So like, I know 
this point should be more so there and then that might match up a little bit better and I'll listen to it. So there's a little bit of an echo. I'm not going to worry too much, but what I do is I keep the audio from my camera, not the audio from my computer because we want to have one consistent quality of audio and obviously the audio from my computer is not as good. So I just pulled the audio level down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide, okay, when do I want the screen recording to totally take over the screen and me to jump down into the corner. So I'm going to watch this really quick and kind of decide what I want going on. Okay, so I think I want to, I'm going to split clip that right there because I want this to remain the exact same. So I want this to remain with this kind of view, but then with this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to move that. So I've got this clip selected. I'm going to click on this little transform option right there, and I am just going to drag it so it is smaller. Okay, guys, this is all we're going to do. And then I'm going to pull it, I like to pull it into the bottom right hand corner. I really should use like the left hand corner or something because that's where my subscribe button appears, but that's okay. And I'm going to click done. Now, you guys can see, do you see the jump there? My screen recording, when I record my whole entire screen, it's not the same size, the same dimensions as a YouTube video. So what I'm going to have to do is also transform this and I am just going to pull it until it fits. And I may actually, hmm, what do I want to do? Yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay. So I am going to pull this even more because I only want it to show like my YouTube channel. I don't want it to show my subscriptions and stuff on the side. So I'm gonna need it to be even bigger. And then I'm just going to drag it to the spot where I think it looks good. Maybe I'll leave like the YouTube search bar and stuff up top, but that is what I'm going to do. And then I have got the screen recording behind me over top. And I like to keep my screen recordings below and all of me in one line, like my main A-roll. I like to keep it in one line just because it's really easily organized in my opinion. And then I'm not like shifting things around and it can get really complicated. So when I have it like this, honestly, I just think it's a lot easier to see all of these clips. And then I've got all these clips. And yes, that one is over that one. And that's the nice thing about Final Cut is you can have multiple layers over it. So I'm gonna continue to go through and do more of the cut downs. I just needed to make sure that that was in place so that if I cut part of the spot where I'm talking, I need to make sure that it matches up with what I am also doing in the screen recording. Okay, I've been working on my initial just like cut through general flow of the video for a while now and I'm realizing because there's so much detail in this video and because I have so many screen recordings and all of that stuff, it takes me longer to get through that whole entire process. So I'm going to skip the rest of the video doing that for right now because I want to share with you guys how I create my graphics and other things and Guys, I'm so, so freaking pumped because this section of the video is sponsored by Canva and I cannot even explain to you guys, like my first original logo for the content bug, I designed on Canva. Every single one of my graphics and things that I have designed for my website, for my YouTube channel, like my cover art for my YouTube channel designed in Canva, like, I can't believe I'm working with them. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring this video. I'm just, I'm honored and I am giddy about it. But basically to explain what Canva is, it's a website where you can design literally anything. And they've got a whole bunch of different templates for you. So let's say you want to design like Instagram story templates or something, or if you had to design a flyer or a logo or a business card or something like that, all of that you can do within Canva. And it is a free platform that you can use. I highly recommend getting the paid version. What I'm going to share with you guys is is the paid version. Like I pay for it monthly. And the reason that I have it is because one, you can get access to a whole bunch of different graphics. And I'm going to share with you guys exactly how you can search them. But also you can download things with a transparent background, which is so, so important with what I'm going to share with you guys. And just about all of the graphics that you see within my YouTube videos, I designed them on Canva. And I want to share this with you guys. So this is the file that I have that includes these graphics that you guys may remember seeing. Like this is a new one that I just included within a YouTube video. Sometimes if I want specific text that matches the exact text that I have on my thumbnails, I will design that in Canva because I also use Canva to design my thumbnails, guys. I use this platform so, so freaking much. But you may remember some of these 
I designed these and if you want, oh, this is such a good tip guys. So when I was using iMovie and I wanted to add movement, you couldn't have several overlays over each other with an iMovie compared to Final Cut, you can, and it's such an advantage to Final Cut. But what you can do is create several just still graphics that have slight changes to them. And then when you include them back to back, it adds movement within your graphics. Such a great freaking tip, but the one graphic that is the first to appear in every single one of my YouTube videos is my Instagram handle. And I get asked a lot about how I designed that and it's seriously so, so freaking easy but I used Canva to do it. So I wanna share with you guys exactly how you can design it. What you are going to do, if you wanna recreate this exact thing, is over here on the left-hand side, I'm already in the elements section. And this is where you can search for a bunch of different things. So let's say I wanted to include like a laptop graphic. What I could do is I could search for laptop, include this over here, and then this is one where I could actually pop in an image in there. So like that little cloud scene, you can actually upload an image and put it in there. But if I just wanted a laptop, maybe I could click on this one instead. I could make it the size that I wanted it and then download it with a transparent background and I've got what I'm looking for. So they've got a ton of different graphics and stuff that you can search for, which I really, really like. But if we wanted to design this Instagram handle right here, I'm gonna go to shapes and click on see more. And you specifically want the one that has the curved edges because that's how currently Instagram has their handle looking. So I'm gonna drag this down, pull it over, maybe make it a little bit smaller. And then, yeah, we're gonna go with about that size. Okay, so that's the general base for the graphic, which I'm actually just not realizing. Mine has a little bit more curved edges, so there may be a different one in here that's got more dramatic curved edges, but that's the general shape of it. Maybe if I shrink it down a little bit, that may look a little bit nicer. Yeah, I like that. Okay, and then what you wanna do is you wanna grab a triangle. Like I'm telling you guys, this is so, so freaking easy. And if you wanna design this on your own, it is like the easiest graphic that you can create for yourself. But there it is, that's it. Like it's seriously that easy. And then I just put the text over it with what my handle was and you download it with a transparent background and you are good to freaking go. So what I now have is I've designed a bunch of things within Canva and I actually have a folder within my external hard drive here. So I've got a folder for Epidemic Sound, all my music lives there, as well as I have got just different YouTube assets and things that I use within my YouTube videos. So for example, my IG tag, that is the graphic that I designed right here. So I just designed it once, downloaded it, I saved it to this folder so that I can include it within my YouTube videos. So I am just going to drag and drop and that's how it appears. It's seriously so, so freaking easy to do. But one of the other things that I've designed within Canva that I get asked about all the time is my recording screen. How do I get this screen that I just popped up right now? How the heck do I get that? And like I said, I already actually have it downloaded right here. So I've got with the dot and without the dot. And that's how I add the movement is I've got one graphic that has the red dot and I've got one graphic that doesn't have the red dot. And I just include them one after the other, after the other, after the other but I designed it within Canva. So actually, if I scroll down, here it is. And I had to include the pink background behind it just so you guys could see what the heck I was talking about because otherwise, without the pink background, that's what it looks like, okay? Because I download it as a transparent image, a transparent background, and that's how I get the recording screen. Now, I already have this designed, so I created this myself just using lines this battery I searched for, this is just a circle that I made red. Like it's seriously so easy. Your graphics do not have to be that complicated guys. But if you wanna say, okay, so this battery, I'm already in the elements section over here, but if I type in battery, let's see what appears. There's actually a bunch of different ones that you could use if you wanted to come up with the exact same graphic, but make it slightly different. Thank you so much to Canva for sponsoring this video. I'm sure we're gonna talk about it a little bit later on, but I just wanted to say that. The next graphic that I want to do is my kind of intro graphic that I like to include. I, at one point in time, was including it with every single one of my YouTube videos, and then I stopped for a little while, but I specifically want to include this graphic again, which is, typing on Google and searching for something. You guys know that graphic. It's so, so easy to recreate and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I create it, how I get the moving text, how I get the sound effects and all of that stuff. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I went back to an old YouTube video that I already have this graphic. So this is what the graphic looks like. You guys remember this? 
And actually, yeah, I just outed the mouse feature last time and I thought that was so, so freaking cute. So what I'm going to do, I am going to specifically just copy and paste this. And this is something that I recommend you guys do when you are creating your graphics for your YouTube channel, create them once and then go back to your old files and copy and paste them into the new video that you are creating. If you have to recreate the same graphic every single time, it's going to take a lot of your time. So if you wanna save time when it comes to editing your YouTube videos, I highly recommend using this strategy, but I wanna break down exactly how I created this. I just want to copy and paste it into this new one. What I ended up doing to create this graphic, it's seriously so easy. The marble background I designed within Canva. This, you can literally see, it says screenshot, guys. I went to Google and I took a screenshot on my computer to get this. My graphics are not advanced. I do some very, very basic things and it works wonders. So I think the one part that trips a lot of people up is like, how do you actually get that moving text? No, it's not a screen recording. So up top here, usually it is going to show you your projects and your events and things that you are working on, but you can click on this T, which is for text or titles. So if you want, like if I hover over some of these, it's going to show you how these work. And within Final Cut, like this one spins around and they do all a bunch of different things. But within Final Cut, they come with a bunch of different text options that you can use. Now, the ones that I use the most, I use custom because the custom one, you can customize it. But the other one I do is if you type in type, typewriter, okay? This is how you get the typewriter effect. So if you want your text to come out in a typewriter fashion, just search for typewriter on Final Cut, and that's what I have right here. Now, the one thing you will notice is that the text is a little bit different, like the font is different. So how did I change the font within this? Okay, so right here, this is where you can change your text. Here, you can change your font. So you can go down through and you can select whatever font you want to. Another thing you can do is you can select the baseline. I don't really, well, okay. So the baseline moves it up and moves it down. Oh, it really selected a goofy font. Let's go back to that one, okay? If you want to change the tracking, if you want to separate the letters a little bit, you can do that all within here. And this is one of the things that I really like about Final Cut that you couldn't do with an iMovie. You didn't have access to all of these features. As I was editing this video, I decided to cut it down and not include some of the final steps within my editing process and break that into a part two of this video because I did share some things when it comes to color correction and adding music and sound effects and all of that, but this video would have been over 40 minutes long and I didn't want to do that to you guys. But there is one quick thing that I do want to share in terms of the effects and visuals within Final Cut because that was kind of the main focus of this video. So what I've got going on here, I have this marble background, which again, I designed in Canva, but on Final Cut, they come with a whole bunch of different effects and stuff that you can use, not only on graphics like this, but also on your video. So if you wanted to add these graphics to these clips, you can do that as well. But I just want to share something with you guys because it's something that I do within my marble background is adding like a grain kind of effect. So if we go over here, I'm going to click on this option. This is going to show you all of the installed effects. And actually, if you hover over it, which let's see if I hold on to this. Um, if you hover over it, you can see what is going on. So if you wanted like a crazy shaking effect, earthquake, all you have to do is drag it, drop it, and then this will have that crazy effect. No, I don't want that. So I'm going to control Z. So you want to make sure that you are on all because if you search for something, let's say in 360, so I want to search for grain. If I search for grain in 360, it's not going to appear. So I want to be in all. And this is the film grain compared to the grain effect. Now my grain effect, because this is the one that I use, it already has some settings selected. So I'm going to drag and drop this onto my marble background because that's where I want to add it. I'm going to go up top. I'm going to click on this option. And now I am just going to reset all of these so you guys can see what the grain effect typically looks like. So typically it looks like this, which obviously you guys know that's not how my marble background appears when I am using it. So the one thing that I did is color adjustment. I do not want it to have that yellow tone. So I changed that. In terms of the amount, I make it a little bit less so it's not as strong, but I'm gonna leave it strong just so you guys can see something. So in terms of scratches, let's say I increased the scratches and I wanted 17. Do you see how all those lines that appeared in there? That's because of the scratches that I ended up adding. Dust, you can add more dust, you can add more hairs. So the hairs are more obvious. You can see like the little, do you 
do you see like the hairs that pop up there? So you can change all of that right within this section under effects. All your effects that you have applied to your clip will appear right there and you can use other effects. So I know a common one is, I think it's water or underwater. The underwater effect is very common, especially if you want your text to be like kind of wavy and stuff, you can apply these effects to your text, to your clips and yeah, it's, it's really cool. So I highly recommend checking that out, but I just wanted to include that within this video because I thought it was an important feature within Final Cut. I'm hoping that you guys got something out of this video. Thank you so much to Canva for sponsoring. If you guys want to get started with Canva, I seriously recommend it. I've been using the platform for four years. I do have the paid version, again, so that I can download transparent images as well as you get access to more graphics, which is awesome, but yeah. I'll include a link in the description bar down below if you want to check them out, but that is it. I'll see you guys back here in another one soon. Bye guys. <laughs> I was trying to take a thumbnail. Now I just look like I've got two heads. Like maybe if I'm positioned like this, is that cute? Make that the thumbnail. You working with Mama today, huh? There she is again, man. Star of the show. What you doing, little girl? Do you see those little paws? Oh, no, I just have a tail. Pop up that appears for what is happening back here? No, I'm your facial agent. Maybe the title will be Fancy and I sharing our editing secrets, and this will be the thumbnail. Shh, shh, shh. Editing secrets, shh.